So, Michael, thanks uh, for making the time uh, to chat to us. Great to uh, have you. It's great to be here. I can't believe it's my first time, but I, I hope I'm going to come back even more. I love the wines, though. I'm glad uh, to hear that. <laughs> yeah. We work hard at trying to make a really exceptional product, and every year is different, and every year is hard. It's also a fun thing to do. How did you get into wine? Well, it's actually an old family farm. My grandfather bought it in the early 50s. He came here to retire after a career as a heart surgeon. It's been in the family hands. At one stage, it left it, it was sold. And when it came back on the market, I just had to come back to my childhood fantasies and memories of getting back the farm. And then for many years, I worked in Joburg and had to fly up here on weekends because my family, my wife Rosemary, was running the farm. It's been an incredible labor of love. Um, you know, looking after vines, sometimes uh, nursing them back to good health, sometimes changing them, and then working really hard to create an exceptional product. At the same time, I've got to tell you, it is not financially sensible. The only tip I can give to any entrepreneurs out there is don't get involved in wine farming. <laughs> I have to say, though, it must be incredibly satisfying to be able to acquire, you know, this beautiful piece of land and the fact that it used to belong to your forefathers. I mean, isn't that amazing? Yes, there's something generational about yeah. it. And I'm reminded of this every time when we plant a tree. You know, at our age, the trees that we plant now will never be at their full growth in our lifetime yeah. still. So you realize how much you're doing for the next generation. But at the same time, you realize that the great trees that we have around us right now, somebody else planted for us before the time. So there's something about a farm that really makes you feel connected across the various generations. And, and the name Bartony, was it, uh, was it always the original, from the original name of the farm, or yes, has it Bartony, changed over time? Bartony itself is a very small town in Cornwall in England, and the original owners came from there and called it Bartony. They say it brings bad luck in farming to change farm names, so we've uh, kept the name and now it's all up to branding and building the aura around the name Bartony. Are you the, just that type of special guy that everything you touch is turns into gold. No, I've certainly <laughs> had my, my lack of setbacks in life. I think if people are honest, um, even people who've uh, achieved great successes in life, it's, it's the setbacks that really define you and it's how you handle them. Um, at the same time, yes, I've been lucky. I've been lucky with the family that I have. I've been, been lucky with the opportunities that I've been given in life. But I think a wise man will always acknowledge that luck has a major role to play in success in life. But it can't just be luck. It's got to be the hard work and the hours that you put in as well. And then it's so much easier to do those things, the hard work and the hours, if it is something that you're passionate about. I agree with that. You, you also create your own luck. You know, the harder, the harder you work, the, the, more, luckier the, you the, get. the luckier you get. Yes, you certainly have to put yourself <coughs> in the positions where luck can happen to you. You know, if you just lock yourself up in your house and you don't mix with people and you don't apply yourself, chances that you're going to be the beneficiary of good luck are very small. And the moment you do see doing something different to the way it's always been done, that in itself is a risk. Okay. Now that risk can make you lucky or unlucky, but at least you're putting yourself out there. Now, Michael, a little bit more about um, yourself. I mean, very busy guy. So um, do you get time to, to cook at home, uh, you know? So it's obviously very <laughs> embarrassing sitting here with a celebrity chef and then to say, the only time I can make food is, is there's the fire. You know, I can put things on a fire. That makes me a very typical South African male. Other than that, um, Rose looks after the meals at the house and we generally eat basic food. We like to eat the food that's from around here. And then we do like eating out and we frequent your restaurant yeah. as often as we can. Um, so we live in the wonderful winelands and we really are blessed with the culinary experience that we have around us. Michael, and you know, obviously we're also talking to entrepreneurs and I think that's something that you're also very passionate about. What type of advice can you give to the guys out there? Well, in short, I'd advise them to hang in there. It's tough being an entrepreneur. And at the same time, the exciting thing about entrepreneurship is entrepreneurs are the people who change the world for the better. Nearly every single great change that has happened in the world has be happened because somebody took that idea and tried to build a business around it. Entrepreneurs have to be resilient, they have to work hard. A lot of people say they don't want to have a boss. If you work for yourself, it's even much tougher than working for a really tough boss. Save money if you can before you start your business because it's much better to have even a little bit of your own capital than to have to go begging to other people, even if they're yeah. friends or family, for money. And then focus on the customer. You know, the 
customer is always right. The customer will tell you what they like about your product, what they don't like, and then be agile enough to change whatever it is you're doing to go with what customer tastes are. And then, Michael, for yourself, I mean, what is your recipe for success? You know, I said earlier, I've been quite lucky. I think that's important um, to acknowledge. But one of the big um, ingredients of success and happiness is the people that you surround yourself with. And I've always looked at people, good leaders will surround themselves with people who are better than they are. If you have friends that you feel are constantly draining you of energy, well, you don't need to have them. You need to have your family, but you can actually choose who your friends are. So if you surround yourself with people that um, energize you, that make you laugh, that stimulate you, that differ from you, but overall motivate you, I think you will have a very fulfilling life. Michael, once again, thanks for your time and, and for the insights. Always great and I mean, inspiring even for me to just listen to you. So well, thank you very much. Thank you. And cheers. Thanks cheers. for visiting us. All the best. Thanks.